Rocky needed to be this lovable. He had to be poo, but updated. I needed the validation. I was feeling very vulnerable as an artist, as a human being, and as a a person who's been in the industry long enough. You know, I somehow felt like I needed this validation. There's no better way of saying it. God, I'm going to get emotional, but I'm I'm really saying it. It's like uh, it just felt like. Karan, welcome to FC Postmortem. We have so much to unpack with Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani. But yeah, first, first, congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you, Anu. It thank really you. put a smile on my face and a spring in my step, and just made me happy. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, God, I'm breathing. I'm breathing finally. I was like, uh, for some reason. Um, I've never been this stressed before a release, and never, and I never, uh, and it was evident this time. Like you know, I had close friends, you know, who and they would hug me, and they would say, "Hey, your body is shaking." Really? Uh, and I was like, literally, I remember the cast and crew. Uh, my friend Kajal, um, uh, she hugged me and she said, "Come with me. What has happened to you?" I said, "I don't know." I said, "I think it's a." Combination of the fact that it's been a seven-year gap, also I think a certain anxiety that built over the last three years within me, with a lot that happened on social media, it kind of formed this ball of anxiety which I actually suppressed and I didn't address, and I think it all just came out. Like I found myself, and I've never done, I've never been like this. I just found myself vulnerable, and just tears would just roll down. Like you know, right before the release on the Tuesday of the release, when my mum held my hand and she said, "You okay?" and I just just teared up. Like I just teared up, really? and then anyone would ask me, and I was just like a like I was feeling embarrassed because I was like, I have two grown up, I mean, two twin children <laughs> in the next room, and I'm the one behaving like a baby in the house. But um, I feel like there was a lot of fear, anxiety, stress that just. Came out at the time of the release, like you know, and I'm glad it all just came out because it had to. Um, and I'd been feeling this burst of anxiety for the last year, and I have been addressing it, but it was at its height at the time of the release week, you know. So um, that morning, uh, when uh, when the film released, I just said, I have to. Just, it's out there now. There's nothing I can do. I just have to, like you know, hope for the best. Yeah, yeah. And how are you feeling right now with? The box office with the rave reviews. What's what's going on in your head? I mean, I I know. I mean, I've spoken about this to you. Uh, the box office is lovely and it's gratifying and it's growing from strength to strength and it's making me smile. I have never received these kind of reviews. I'm not used to them. You know, I'm not used to being reviewed well. Like you know, there is always a certain level of polarization where my films come. You either get the Two stars and some three and a halves and fours or threes and or you get like bashed completely and I go back to all my movies and I read those reviews. I think my name is Khan got some good reviews and that time it was like uh, like I would say sixty to seventy percent review positive kind of zone. This time there was just like good reviews everywhere and I was like, what is happening? Like you know, what did I go and make and have I made a mistake? <laughs> Because, because if the reviews are good, am I not going to see the box office? Not that the two should be related, but I started getting worried. When you liked the film, I got worried. I was like, uh, "Oh, I'm not used to Anu liking my film. I'm not this used to." This is not true. Uh, I mean, yes, I know, but you liked them in retrospect. Uh, but like this time, you liked it in the in the current mode, and then everyone at Film Companion liked it. I was like. I, uh, I, I asked you for Rahul Desai's number, and I haven't yet to speak to him. We missed each other because I was like, Rahul Desai liked my film. I'm like, I went to the office and I was like, Mayank Shekhar liked my film, and everyone liked my film. Then people are writing columns on it, and I was like, and I will go back to where the journey and everything began. But like, I was so at one point, Apoorva was trying to track the box office collections. But as a filmmaker and as an artist, I was kind of so happy to revel in this uh, uh, critical love. Uh, because I felt like when Anurag Kashyap called me and said, "I've seen your film twice," I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> To see this film again, I'm like, and in the same breath, I got a call from Gudu Uncle, uh, Mr. Rakesh Roshan. So I was like a massive mainstream filmmaker, yeah. and the 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 real movement, the alternate movement poster boy, right? Both called me one after the other. How is this possible? Like, what? I and you know, when I was just getting these calls, I was like, for a minute, it took me a while to. I was absorbing. Yeah. You know, I was really absorbing, and I was trying to kind of figure out. 
um, what was going on? <laughs> like, I was like, like, this is not what I signed up for, actually. And these things happened, you know. I, I thought, you know, oh my God, they're going to talk about, oh, the same song and dance, there are designer clothes and all of that is, of course, there. Sure. But I'm hoping they see that, you know, because I always feel like I try to do stuff, but it never gets acknowledged. Well, it came 2023, the July 28th, and good things happened on that morning. So, yeah, that's what I was feeling, surprised, shocked and elated. I want to start with what I loved most in the movie, which is Rocky Randhawa. Yeah. Uh, he is just fabulous. I mean, we all fell in love, yeah. right? I want to understand where did he come from? What was your brief to your writers, to Ishika, to Shashank, to Sumit uh, about so, creating this man? So, um, you know, in the pandemic, when I decided that I had to put Takht on hold mm -hmm. and I wanted to write a love story, um, um, I used to be a lot on the gram. You know, and there was a lot of these West Delhi influencers who, you know, who were kind of speaking and uh, they would, of course, be content creators as well as influencers. And I was very, very amused by how they were. They were so full of life and they were joyous and yet saying the funniest things, you know. And, and uh, so I think Rocky came from there. I always wanted to talk about, uh, see, I, then it came about like talking about a love story that was not about essentially like people kept thinking it was like two states initially yeah, yeah. Um, because that's about two different communities like you know then you're talking about the South Indian community and the Punjabi mine was never about that mine yeah. was about patriarchy and matriarchy mm. it was always the the clash of the two yeah. where the Punjabi family are essentially patriarchal in nature even though they're led by women yes yeah. even though they're led by women which is what I Correct. brought the in irony. to kind of yeah. the, bring in the irony. Yeah. And then, of course, we all know about Bengali families and how matriarchal they are and how beautiful that is. Um, that is the core thought. And then I went back into a personal story, which I don't want to speak about. It's about the family huh. uh, that had an instance that then I put into the film, which formed the crux of the Dharamji and the Shabanaji love story. Right. So when all that came together, Rocky needed to be this lovable, he had to be poo, but updated. I, you know, <laughs> I think he's the most charismatic character you've created after poo. Yeah, so it was, yeah, he was like, it is, he yeah. was the male poo. Right. And he was like the Ken to Barbie, but like borrowing from poo, who is Barbie also, right. you know. So right. it's like, it's all ironical that Barbie is out here. But like, he was like the perfect kind of Ken who was, had rough edges War, like I always, I, I'm, I'm always very um, amused and impressed by the gym culture, you know, because I feel like boys who go to the gym, huh. like they, I feel like they only talk about that, right, you know, right. and I, so I wanted him to be a gym boy, hmm. I wanted him to be, um, you know, but I wanted to be golden hearted, like he would do banda hai, you know, like dost hai, like, you know, sabka yaar hai, you know, yeah. and he's, he's into his BFF and he's into the family and he's full like, you know, Chati, you know, like Thaan, Sina Thaan ke, he's everywhere. Yeah. But he is the type who will go to Emporium Mall and shop. Right. Like, you know, his and heart buy out. everything. And buy everything branded. Because that's what he thinks is cool. Yeah. You know, so he'll wear Gucci on his sleeve, but he also has his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. And that's where he was always. So that was how Shashank and Ishita and Sumit collectively kind of brought Ra Rocky Randhawa to life, you mm, know. Mm. Um, but the important thing was never should he come across annoying. Never should he come across like he's grating on your nerves and right. overdoing it. Yeah. It's a fine line, right? With a yeah, character like this. It is. If you go the other way, you can be absolutely annoying and over the top. Yeah. It's true, Ranveer's genius that he... I'm going to come to that because it's such a match of actor and character. Yeah. Hannah, it's, yeah. it's like, how did you, what was your brief to him? Because... He is energetic, he is flamboyant, but he doesn't cross the line. How did you balance that? How did I he do it? I have no credit to take for that. Ishita wrote some great dialogue, firstly. Hmm. She is from Delhi. Huh. She's half Punjabi, half Bengali. Oh! Grown up in Delhi. Huh. So the dialogue uh, came from her. Uh, Shashank has grown up in Kolkata. Hmm. Uh, you know, Sumit is Bengali. Right. So it was a clear writer's room of like people who have seen these people. Mm. Uh, so uh, the idea was to make Rocky always lovable and vulnerable and obviously clueless 
about the world. Yeah. He really doesn't know his politics. He doesn't know yeah. about doesn't anything. Care. And he doesn't care because yeah. that's not what his, his aim is like, you know, to kind of run the family business and just kind of be himself, ride yeah. his Ferrari and just like, you know, uh, do what he has to do. So I think everyone got that brief and that mm. memo. Mm. But when we gave it to Ranveer and he heard the dialogue, when we were on a recce, Anu, for three weeks in Delhi, uh, Ranbir was with me right through those three weeks. On Who, a recce? On a recce. We, he had nothing to do. Yeah. He would go, he would meet those Instagrammers that we had a whole, long list of people, including Yuvraj, who's also a content creator and has was with us on set right through. Um, he would speak to them, he would pick up lingo, he would like absorb, he would go everywhere. He would, Ratko, he would even be driving around Delhi and just getting the flavor. I don't know what he was doing, but he had a process. He was there in Delhi right through my recce. Like he never came on the locations, but he was in the hotel working with the team, meeting Instagrammers, content creators, influencers, getting the line. He worked it. He created the Rocky Randhawa you see is, is a lot on paper, but it's a lot to do with him. Did you he know, improvise lines? Yes, yes. Many of them. Because like he had picked them up from here and there. Yeah. And you know, he would like improvise them. Yeah. Uh, never veered away from the script. But it, th but the lines were intrinsically very funny also, you know. They are very funny. <laughs> so he had a lot to play with in any case. Right. But he brought in some of the, you know, like the little bit of the Delhi lingo that he picked up. Yeah. Picked up and um, he just brought a lot of that of his own self. Mm. Um, in many ways, Rocky is an extension of Ranveer's um, personality. Yeah. Uh, but it's the it's an OTT version of him also. Right. But also Ranveer, if you have to know, has, is is not like this all the time. Yeah. This is his persona out there. When he comes here, if he comes to the film companion office, he'll be like he'll own the room. Yeah. But otherwise, he'll vanish for twelve hours and he'll be in his on his own in mm -hmm. his thoughts. Like I always tease Ranveer, I don't know how to get in touch with him because you send a message, you don't know when that reply will come because he's thinking, he's absorbing, he's he used to, he used to like literally sit for 10, 10 hours on his own just with the character. I I don't know what he does, but like when he comes on set, and I have to tell you uh, an anecdote. The first day we shot with him in character was the first scene he meets Rani in the office. Yeah. By mistake, he had a feeling we were shooting another scene. So he was like, oh, I'm, I'm not prepped for this scene. This is the biggest scene. It's my first scene. I'm meeting Rani for the first time. So I was like, yeah, but we're shooting this. That is what you huh. do learn your lines. And he said, no, I know my lines, but huh. I, I need to prep. Huh. And I realized he was very hyper. So I went up to him and I said, what happened? So he's like, you know, when you prepare for history and someone tells you the exam is geography, that's what I'm feeling like right now. So I said, okay, take your time. Take four hours. We'll yeah. take a break. Yeah. Uh, he went. I don't know what he did. He came back and we did the scene. Boom. Like it was done. And when we were... You know, on the monitor, I was like, God, he's got it. He's just got it. Yeah. And his best friend played by Abhinav, Vicky, uh, was just as hilarious as he was on the side. If you just turn your eye towards him, you'll see that he's doing equally hilarious things. <laughs> and and because of Alia's sheer genius, she was organically reacting to them. Because it was, it, you must also say that because of Rani's reactions, Rocky actually comes across even more intriguing and funny. Yeah. Because she's giving really like, without giving like over the top reactions, but she's really looking like he's kind of hot, right. but he's uh, like a, a creature, but he's kind of sexy in his own way is what the look she gave. Because yes. I wanted, I, I told her, I said, she's saying, what do you want me to do? I said, I kind of want you to think you're turned on at this point. Yeah. But you don't want to address it because it's kind of like, like, you won't be able to admit to yourself that you're being attracted to a man like this. Right, right. You know, the dance that Ranveer and Tota Roy Chaudhary do is just dolare dola. Yeah. It was just so spectacular and, and just so exuberant and defiant and joyous. What was it like to create that? Firstly, um, there are two homages I have I've, uh, uh, paid. Two filmmakers. One is Yash Chopra mm. with Tum Kya Mile. Uh, I wanted a Yash Chopra snow jacket saris song. The works. Unabashedly, we say inspiration. Let me just be more honest and say copy. I copied a Yash Chopra song like I copied a Sanjay Bansali right. set. Right. Uh, um, my brief to Amrita was let's do a Sanjay Bansali. And this is in always a homage in the way that one would say it with a lot of love and respect. We all know it's a copy. 
I mean, it's copied. It's very much Sanjay Bansali's aesthetic. It's not mine. It's his beautiful aesthetic that I've copied. Mm. So I'm very happy to say it, put it out on record. And I don't want anyone to say that I in any way thought that I was doing something different. No. But the sequences was beyond the set. Yeah. It was much more than what was the, the aesthetic of the, of the set. Yeah. Uh, it was never about, the set had to look like that because I wanted that. To the naked eye, it had to look beautiful, Bansali-esque. Mm. Uh, that to me was just the part B of it. The part A was the, the, the song, Dola Re Dola, is to subvert it and to kind of make it, um, because it's about also things that I have believed in personally. As a child, um, I was very effeminate and I used to dance uh, in my own room to Hindi film songs, to Lata Ji songs. And my dad thought it was great. Like he used to think, see me dance on, uh, you know, Dafli Wale and I used to do the Jaya Prada part, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I used to pick up the step and, you know, I was doing my step and my father used to watch and clap. And every time his friends came, uh, he would say, Karan, wo dance the house of yes. And he would put on the song and I would dance. And no one told me that there was anything wrong with that at that time. So I grew up thinking, this is fine. Much later when you go to college and you realize that you carry that through yeah. uh, and you do those moves and people look at you and laugh. Yeah. And um, you're called all kinds of things and you know there are terms used. And it stayed in my heart, you know, because I feel like I grew up with that feeling that I was laughed at for my body language or for my way of being. Yeah. Um, somewhere Tota's character is is borrowed from my childhood, you know, and my and so when he says Hunar ka koi gender nahi hota, yeah. um, I believe that. I believe that. So I felt that Rocky's coming around had to happen because the most so-called misogynist, macho man, him doing kathak. Who when you show in the Punjabi sequence, everybody, when, when all the family at the, at the Sangeet people laugh. Yeah, yeah. That's what 90% of people would do yeah. if you saw a man, in, people who are not culturally inclined or don't know better. Yeah. Uh, they do that, yeah. you know, and they laugh. They find it, the feminism, uh, funny instead of appreciating it as an art form. Yeah. Uh, that's why we wanted to run full marks to Webavi, who actually worked tirelessly on Tota and Ranveer. At one point, I remember Ranveer calling me, he says, man, I don't have this in my body. I don't have Kathak in my body. Like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. He was really having a meltdown. Tota was struggling because Tota's not a dancer. Right. He's not a classical dancer. He's an actor who has rhythm. Yeah. He has party rhythm. <laughs> like, you know, uh. like, but he's on a Kathak's half, halves and hand Correct. and everything Correct. and perfection. And Vebhavi is a perfectionist. Mm. She didn't let them go. They were, uh, Tota was rehearsing for six months. Because six he was months? six months non-stop in Kolkata. Non-stop, he had a teacher come and teach him. Ranveer uh, rehearsed for over a month and a half. Just for that one and a half minute clip. And of course the song that followed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like mainly for the Dola Re Dola clip. Because he, he found it very, he's saying this is possibly the most challenging thing I've ever done. Uh, so finally when it's getting this applause, yeah. it's very gratifying for them. Yeah. Because they put in the work. Yeah. We conceive, but they have to, you know, absolutely execute. And, you know, that is not easy. So that scene was about the subversion, you know, yeah. of also about and going back to ki hunar ka koi gender nahi hota. Correct. You know, and Correct. that's why I think that you have a kind of a feeling of some kind of pride and joy when you see that moment. Like, what did you feel when you saw it? Just like the joy. Yeah, yeah. Just the high. Yeah. It's a high. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, uh, that's what it was. And, uh, and as I said, a lot of it came from my own, um, I, I won't call it, even call it traumatic. It wasn't that traumatic to me. It was just like, like my dad was okay with me yeah. dancing. Then why is in the world? Yeah. My dad was so... But it just stayed with you. It stayed because I'm like, my dad would clap and applaud. And he was such a, you know, maybe he didn't know what he was reacting to. I don't even know whether he realized that he was, you know, that at that time in the, in the late 80, late 70s, early 80s, that his son was dancing to all these songs. It could appear really like unusual yeah. is the word, but yeah. he never thought it was. Yeah. You know, but Karan, my all time favorite moment and, and spoiler alert, everybody, this is going to be a spoiler filled conversation, um, was the kiss yeah. between Dharamji yeah. and Shabana. Yeah. Okay, I did not see that coming. I don't think anyone did. Yeah. There was an audible gasp. Yeah. All right, everybody was like, oh! 
<laughs> like that. Yeah. Okay, and it was just so lovely because you're acknowledging that desire and love has nothing to do with age. Of course. And and cinema, everywhere around the world is notoriously ageist. Uh, it is about like only young people get to feel a certain way. And here you're just sort of cancelling all of that and saying, no, look at these two. Uh, was it hard to convince either actor? No. Shabana Ji is a trooper. Yeah, she's, yeah. A, she's a master actor. Like, what an actor. She's a bop actor, as they say. Like, you know, like, <laughs> she was, I told you, there was not, never even a, like a, like there was no debate, there was no question. Dharam Ji was like, karna <laughs> Like, it was like, fine. Two great veterans just doing, performing with absolute aplomb, no yeah. questions asked. Mm. I needed it to be a peck and yeah. that was that was what I wanted. Correct. But I'd always seen, firstly, one of my all-time favorites is Abhi Na Jao Chhod Ke. And Absolutely. Like, and, uh, there is no greater love song. Yes, there is. Ki Dil Abhi Bhara Nahi. So, uh, it had to be that song. It had to be their song. Mm. Because that's what she says in the dialogue. Ke, you know, Mall Road Pe Wo Walks, Hum Dono Ka Wo Reerun, Hamara Wo Favorite Gana. Um, uh, it had to be, be nice. that became the thematic kind yeah. of connection of Rocky and Rani as well. Um, it was the, it was just glorious to see them mm -hmm. and to see Dharamji. And you know, at one point I said, let's go Manmohan Desai on this. He stands up and he sings and he walks, he's on a wheelchair. But you forget and you don't question it. Oh my God, you're right. You know, yes, I'm just saying. I never, just I never thought about that. There is, and to give a little tiny bit of shock, I have Ranveer looking at him walking like this, but you'll never go there. I won't go there. He's done it. He's looked at him. Oh, what happened? How's he walked up? He walked up. He only walks up for Shabana Ji twice. Right. When he sings Aaj Mausam and when he sang Abhi Na Jao Chhodke. Yeah. The rest he's on a wheelchair. So I'm like, my logic was love makes him walk. You know, love can move mountains. Why can't it make a man walk? Um, and everybody said, but logically, would I said, you know, is this scene logical? What's happening in this moment? In the middle of a drawing room of a palatial, over-the-top Randhava paradise, this man is singing Abhina Jao Chhodke to a past love in front of his whole family. And she is singing along, not caring that the wife is also there. So I'm like, there is no logic to the situation. Go with the beauty and romance of it. Yeah. And maybe we'll get away. You know, yeah. and that's how it, what it was. Yeah, yeah. And the lines, Karan, you talked about Ishita being a, a great writer. But for me, the best line is the Gajni or Sajni. Sajni. <laughs> okay, we have fallen off our chairs laughing. <laughs> uh, you are inherently very witty. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a very funny person. How much of you is in these characters? A lot of the... the, the uh, characterization, the coming in, like, uh, like I've met Rani's of my life. Um, I've uh, seen a lot of Rockies, you know, uh, in the world. Um, a lot of them are somewhere or the other uh, born within me or an observation of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of those lines also were like in the part of the writing process. Uh, and they came easily because that was the world of the film. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I give full credit to the writers because uh, I was very careful that we needed, um, while we needed a commercial lens, we also needed a progressive and a woke lens. Um, so it was a great combination of uh, Shashank who brought in so much of the commerciality into the yeah. film. Sumit and Ishita brought so much of the sensibility and the, the correctness, the political correctness. Um, Ishita was very, very cognizant of the fact that, you know, we can't land up, you know, uh, we are anyway in stereotypical territory, let's not go wrong in any other way. So it was a great energy of writers that came together. Like I would work with them all together in a heartbeat because they brought so much to the film. Uh, but it was worrisome because uh, we were dealing with a lot of characters, yeah. you know. Yeah. So there's even Golu as in Gayatri's character, I've been fat, I've seen that. Uh, you've been fat shamed, you know what that feels like. You know, people just say the most, like I feel when you're very fat or very thin, it's both, you get shamed either way. <laughs> like I remember my friend Niranjan Anger, who's very thin, telling yeah. me, they said, you know, everyone goes on about fat shaming. There's also thin shaming, yeah. you know, because people keep saying, you're so thin, you're so thin. It's not a compliment after a point, you know. Yeah. It's like, you so both, both shaming yeah. is shaming. Yeah. So I, I felt like all these characters somewhere came from, a part of me or a part of my uh, observation pool. You know, Karan, a lot of commenta commentators, a lot of critics have said that this, the film is like that line that uh, Rani thinks for Dhan Lakshmi ki... Soch nahi swad vahi. Correct. Yeah. But I would argue that your soch has always been nahi. 
Yeah. Right? For 25 years, Karan. And it's, it's a very interesting sort of dissonance in your art that your influences are sort of the kind of Maharatis of yeah. commercial mainstream, right? It's Raj Kapoor, it's Yash Chopra, yeah. it's Suraj Bajatya who debuted just a few yeah, years yeah, before yeah. you did. But right from the beginning, you've peppered it with, you know, little sort of hatke, right? Yeah. You've pushed the envelope, your women have agency, you introduced queer love, even if it was just yeah. as comedy. Uh, you ha talked about a woman's pleasure in your short. Is this something that you struggle to balance? Like you're talking about like, you have to have it commercial, but you also have to be politically correct? Because I believe that if you are messaging, if you don't do it in, in the packaging of a mainstream entertainer, then how are you going to reach yeah. so many millions of people? Um, if I made a film like a short, like in a part of an anthology, like I did with Love Stories, Bombay Talkies, uh, where we talk about, you know, strong repressed sexuality or a woman's right to pleasure. Um, compared to those, how many people will see that compared to a big mainstream, yeah. you know, film? So I think you have to walk that tightrope. Yeah. Now, when you walk that tightrope, you can even fall off that rope, yeah. you know. So I'm like, it's essential that you keep walking on that tightrope and make sure that you don't. So there will be things that you will do that perhaps, like, you look back and say, Are, you know, ye thoda wahan zyada ho gaya, yeah. but it's all coming with conviction. Like at that point of time, when Shriti Jog uh, turns around and completes uh, Aaj Phir Jeene Ki Tamanna Hai, it's complete, um, it's a complete, uh, like, uh, what do you say, uh, suspension of belief mm. in that moment in a drawing room, singing a song. Uh, you can laugh at it or you can clap with her. Yeah. One of the two I know can happen. Mm. That's the chance you take. But it's coming from my space of Subhash Kai conviction. You know, where it's like a rebellion in love and you're singing Ji Ha Ji Bahabat Ki 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 Zamane Se Bagavat Ki when you know Minakshi and Jackie sing that yes. in Hero or, or you're like, you know, like Pyar Karne Wale Kabhi Darte Nahi Jo yeah. Darte Hai Wo Pyar Karte Nahi and like, I've grown up clapping in my head and heart on those sequences. Mm. So I'm like, even the song uh, Dindora is actually a leaf of that page. Yes. You know, yes. Um, it had to be just updated. So I was like, I had to do it. I had to just walk that tightrope, but also make sure that if I am messaging, I don't do it in something that may not be viewed in large numbers. But Karan, do you struggle with it as a storyteller? When you sit down to create, do you think about, I can say this, but I can't say that? Uh, no, no, not in this film. I didn't struggle at all. I quite enjoyed the characters. Yeah. I enjoyed all of them. I enjoyed their backstories. I enjoyed... Uh, the people they were, um, I loved, uh, you know, it was a, a, the, uh, the struggle was uh, where Alia and I had to sit down and say, how do we make this character likable and lovable? Because she can come across over opinionated. And it's again to Alia's genius that she actually made her character strong, but also vulnerable yeah. in love. And she's such a good actor. She's that, fabulous. Is that yeah. she just brought that vulnerable. So we struggled internally with projections of performances but there was never a point where I said okay I can't do this but I can do that I did everything I know what did I not do I went to the mountains for a love song I did a Bansali ode I did a lip sync song with three with all the the, the, the girls in the industry I, I did like I mean I did everything I could have ever asked for I put up big sets and I put had dancers in abundance uh, I what did I not do? I did everything I love about mainstream Indian cinema. Yeah. Uh, I never pulled any stops, yeah. like at all. Like I went for the jugular. Uh, but within that, huh. I, I felt like there was a story to tell that would be deeply impressionable hmm. and hopefully resonant uh, with um, a large section of society. You know, uh, the other, of course, great sort of propelling force in your cinema is love. Yeah. You know, like Rocky says, love hai to sab, sab hai. hai. Right? Yeah. Uh, and all the men and women in your films are yearning for love, getting over love, falling in love. I remember last year when we talked, uh, after your birthday, you had said to me that the one regret that you have is that you weren't very mindful of your own personal yeah. life. That, yeah. that you didn't sort of pay enough attention yeah. to it. And of course, this is completely amateur <laughs> psychoanalysis. Yeah. But is there a connection between that and the love that sort of flourishing flamboyant love we see in your films. I think you live vicariously. Mm. Cinema uh, filmmakers have that luxury of living vicariously through their, um, I think, incomplete dreams. Yeah. Uh, you know, the love story that you want, 
uh, in your own life, when that doesn't happen, you have the luxury of living vicariously through your movies. Um, the problem is that I'm only living vicariously. <laughs> it's like I'm not being able to translate that into finding my own uh, big love story. And uh, as they say, uh, like you say, age has nothing to do with love. So you never know at age 51, it might happen. But uh, I enjoy the, I at least have this, uh, this massive platform to express everything that lies within. You know, that, you know, I think cinema really offers that to you. Writing, creating content, creating characters, creating those magical looks between two characters. Um, it, it satiates um, that void within me, uh, which lies empty yeah. right now, you know. And I feel like the love that I express on celluloid is my love story. Um, my love story with cinema is perhaps the biggest love story I'll have, you know, and it may not translate into a functional romance in the real world. But I'm like, so be it. Uh, you know, har kisi ko nahi milta yaha pyar zindagi mein. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the movie. The other scene that really moved me was when Rocky is telling Rani's family yeah. that, uh, you know, I am who I am yeah. because I don't know better. And, and you can't cancel everybody out, yeah. that there has to be some compassion, you know, we have to allow each other yeah. and not judge. Uh, those are not easy thoughts to make accessible, right? These are not conversations we see every day in Hindi cinema. What was the challenge of writing that scene and Ranveer was so good in it. Oh, he was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he really, 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 really worked on that scene for like a really, he knew that was his, his big, big, big moment to yeah. shine. The thing was, I tried to, in my own way, as a filmmaker, and the writers, full credit to them, that scene is full credit to all the writers, uh, to kind of flip the, the, the cliched scene into on its head in some way. Mm. So the first thought was like, of course he's going to come and say sorry. But I'm like, collectively everyone thought, but why should he, not just while saying sorry, even talk about what his pains are like. Yeah. It's okay that they are offended. Yeah. But what about the times they offended him? Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and why should he not address that? So I'm like, everyone expected a typical when Tota gives his bit, which is warm and beautiful, and yeah. when he holds his mother's hand and he says, Honar ka koi gender ni you feel ke Rocky will go down on bended knees, apologize, end of scene. Yeah. That's not who Rocky is, though. That's not who I ever saw Rocky as. I saw Rocky saying that. I screwed up, I messed up. But what about you guys? Yeah. Like, you know, like I don't know better. Like I I abhi old or cold nibol sakte, black or black ni bol sakte. He says, you know, you know, mu kholne se dar lagta hai, which is actually in that house, that is what is it, it, and this is truly identifiable to a gazillion people. Absolutely. I have to keep lecturing my mother about these things right. because all wrong words come I out. I do it you know? with my husband. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I yeah, well, your husband a lot more than I think my mother would <laughs> needs to be schooled. Uh, but like, but yeah. you know, I just feel like at the end of the day, terminology yeah. is something that we are trained not because we created that terminology. That's the surrounding that we grew up in. Yeah. Now, if someone was fat, people called me fat. Yeah. Nobody now today in an interview will say plus size. Yeah. We'll say vertically challenged. Correct. You know, uh, which we never said any. We of never this. said any of yeah. this. We will say like you know visually challenged. Yeah. yeah. We don't say, you know, you know, you know, audibly challenged. You just keep saying different terms because you're not, you're so scared to offend. Yeah. So that scene, I think, resonated with people because they're like, Are, yaar, he's saying Chinese ko Chinese bol sakte ya nahi bol sakte. He said, because, he said, ya kaise karum order ke Himachal ke pados wali desh se, wo crispy chiki, chicken lagana, which is like, <laughs> because he was like, and then that goes, so that scene had to be turned on his head and he said, aap jo sochte ho, aap mere upar haste ho, use mein kya gonga? Correct. You know, so eventually, yeah. and I don't speak language either write English language and you laugh. Yeah. That's also shaming, right? It is. You've also been yeah. <laughs> also language shaming me. So, And then of course he apologizes, yeah. of course. But I said it has to start in a way that you should laugh. That was my brief. I said mm. the first thing you should do is that you're thinking so sober, calm, but let's bring in laughter before we go into emotion. Yeah. And that was my endeavor in a lot of the scenes is to mm. break it. Yeah. But that scene that it's for the for the people who understand it, it's a cancel culture scene. Yeah. But for the people who may not know about cancel culture, will still look at it and yeah, yeah, sahi bol banda. Right. You know. Yeah. Ye to sahi hai. Ye to hamare saath bhi hota hai. Correct. You know. You know. People offend ho jate easily. Usko usko vaki there's so many houses in this country that will say that chai pine se khali ho jate. Yes. Why? Why? 
why is fairness cream such a huge deal in this country because yeah. skin color is not but that's ridiculous yeah. you can be gorgeous in any color yeah. you know and that's the communication is what i also believe in yeah. i come from that head space in my head but terminology even i've struggled with you know like i've also had to be corrected sometimes yeah. you know uh, and now i am so within the zone of of political correct of political correctness that i think 300 times before you know i'm speaking yeah. you know and saying anything that would offend anyone because i'll become like immediately i'll know that the anyway the trolls are you know waiting they're already i have an army that hate me i don't want to build a further larger army that will arrive along with the existing army anyway so i'm like okay bhai yeah <laughs> like you know i'll better watch my words but karan i felt that in the second half it did the narrative did wobble under yeah. the message yeah uh, did you recognize that how challenging was it the to kind of fit it the edit was challenging it? nitin mm. bed is a genius editor yeah genius editor i mean he is just such a com- i it was very difficult anu we tried very hard uh, because there were too many there were 10 principal characters mm. and each needed closure each that's what i wanted for them um and it was very tough to pack in the the the, the elements of humor and say what you need to i did realize that we were struggling to get the the edit to be what it was sometimes you know you will have to keep some of that wobbliness or bloatedness because if you lose some of that because you know if i have to sit academically with you and i say okay i know you sit with me i'll remove this but will you feel this there then yeah i'll remove this here i'll take this out but then will you feel the impact of that hmm. everything had a payoff right. it was very difficult for me to take anything out beyond what it be shot the film was 3 hours and 10 minutes long really and we've got 22 minutes of the film uh and i was like really, i was like completely ruthless as was nitin and i said nitin tell me if i'm keeping something i shouldn't and in fact he made me add things back I was actually cutting even more. Why did you truncate the songs? Did you think I did? They shortened. I know, but why? Did you I, think people I, wouldn't? No, be because interested? I know that get on with it. Like there's so many songs. Watch it on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, like it's there for you. And now in the, uh, I'm sure in our in our Amazon version we'll have the songs. Right. I had to. The most beautiful song is Kurmai, which yeah. is the last end credit song. It's in a dabba. I yeah. mean, I feel so bad. Yeah. But that's because I'm like. I don't care I want the length below 250 it has to be to 48 it has to be to 48 so we had to the end credits are critical but we yeah. had to put the song into a dabba because if I put the whole song to you and then end credits I would have been at 253 so I'm like I was really combating you know yeah. those optics just the know? length see that's the time the producer and the director fight right yeah. and I'm the producer and director and 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 like I was that was my dilemma I was not going to say like oh screw you I don't care yeah. I'm not that person I'm like no I care Mm-hmm. I care, you know. I care about how the film performs at the box office, yeah. um, which is why I'm. We run a studio. It's critical to look at every film with the right commercial lens as well, yeah. never at the cost of possibly communicating what you have to. But some decisions like this were taken to kind of tighten the song. The songs are all beautiful and long, and I hope you get to see them on YouTube. <laughs> They're all <laughs> there. But Karan. when the music first dropped it was not appreciated yeah, right yeah. it uh, and and truthfully i think um, uh, edel hai mushkil was such an iconic album that yeah. anything will pale in comparison yeah. and you know so people were very critical ah but this is like this this is like that what was what have you taken away from so that? the thing is that you can't compare the music of edel to the music of rocky rani only because Adil has heartbreaking heart wrenching songs yeah. because that's that film. Yeah. This is a celebration film which even and let me tell you this music will all start picking up now because yeah. you'll have context. Yeah. And the melodies are beautiful. Yeah. I still believe Pritam is a genius. Amitabh Bhattacharya is a genius. Whether the songs Ve Kam Leya Tum Kya Mile a uh, kurmai roland there there's a song that sonu has sung uh, but a critical part happens in the film all these songs you'll find yourself suddenly when the album is dropped and you hear it you'll start liking those movies the songs now initially there's too much pressure you're waiting to feel that your first song is going to you know um, top the charts and you know not every song can these days it's tough it's a really tough crowded market yeah. of non film and film and one song breaks through suddenly and you don't know why and then you think so i feel all the music i'm very proud part of the music of the film and i believe that i never bought into the criticism because i firmly believe the music is strong it just will needed the film to kind of 
you know take it further you'll find yourself humming those songs now yeah. and you will and those songs will have a life of their own and they will have a long shelf life they just needed the film mm. like that's why i'm feeling like none of our communication before this actually landed it didn't i was going to ask you so, when it didn't and but, there was all that but karan there was all that criticism of the chemistry कि केमिस्ट्री नहीं है आई सो वो कहां से है मुझे तो समझ नहीं आता उनकी इतनी केमिस्ट्री है बहुत इन द फिल्म इट्स अमेजिंग या बट मैं केमिस्ट्री को आप 2 मिनट में कैसे दिखाओगे yeah. आप पता नहीं वो क्या 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 देयर वाज सो हिज बैक फ्लिप हिज हेयर फ्लिप आई मीन आई डिड इवन नोटिस एंड आई वाज लाइक डिड ही रियली मूव दिस हेयर ओके मेबी आई थॉट लेटर एंड देयर वाज अ डायरेक्ट कंपैरिजन विद ऑब्वियसली शाहरुख खान सी नाउ नाउ हाउ कैन यू हाउ कैन यू लिव अप टू दैट लेगेसी यू कांट राइट बट आई स्टिल वांटेड टू you know satisfy my urge to go yeah. to kashmir and shoot a love song and like abhi hoga comparison of course hoga maine hi wo gaane banaye hain right fir se kar raha hu with not shahrukh and kajal now with yeah. you know with these actors and you can't shahrukh is a legend he created love in cinema yeah. kajal and he are an iconic love pair how can you even compare you can't compare but should i take away the fact that i don't want, i don't want to not do the song i want yeah. to still do it i'll try my best you'll buy into it eventually is my hope so chemistry was i was say, i was like yaar chemistry ke upar problem hai gaano ke upar issue hai you know they are feeling ki ye thoda ye silly film to nahi hai mm. stupid to nahi hai yeah, so then yeah. i just felt ke acha i'm not being able to communicate i had many concerned people messaging me and saying why this is not working that is not working this huh. is not working i'm like did you lose heart karan no did, no no the thing with uh with experience and uh, Age is and also um, an onslaught of being hated um, gives you a very strong resilience. Mm. So I feel like I kept it calm for all of those weeks. It's the week before mm. that had nothing to do with actually all the chatter. criticism to the chatter. That yeah. was not what was getting to me. Mm. What got to me was the fact that oh my god, the film is going to be out. and some way i know I, i i have to say that i needed the validation mm. i was feeling very vulnerable as an artist as a human being and as a a person who's been in the industry long enough you know i somehow felt like i needed this validation i felt like i was um i needed it like you know you like it's like your body needs sugar you know you sometimes just you know when your pressure is low um i felt like that validation was my sugar it needed to kind of pump up because i've been it's just been a weird couple of years and uh, while we all put up a great show you know when we walk out into the world um there are so there is so much going on within you know me and my heart and my head that needed some sense of validation and feeling will i get it or not mm. is what gave me the anxiety yeah. before the release hmm. i was in as i was well, the head of this interview i said i was trembling i literally was i was shaking i wasn't sleeping i was like up at night staring at my ceiling or what trying to watch something that was just trying to but i was just up and my closest friends realized that yeah. and i literally for the first time reached out to people and said can you just be with me for these 4 5 days So I had like three or four like strong army members, you know, that just stood with me like right through, and they didn't leave me till I went to bed because I was like a baby. Because I was, I told you, I found myself just weeping like at every given point of time. I was crying like, and I was like tears were rolling down, and they, they didn't even know what to do with me, yeah. you know, because I'm this big boy, like fifty-one year old man, crying for no reason. Like you know, I was like shivering like sh- at the cast and crew trial. there were so many people yeah. and at pvr and i went up to the room and i just sat and wept i don't know why i just wept and then my amrit my friend aputlu aarti shetty pooja they all just came and they, i got we had one group hug and they said why are you feel you've made such a good film they kept saying i said oh, i don't know i can't express it i can't show this side to my mom either you know because my mother feels of make them more my mother feels yeah. of my mood yeah. like i'm happy she's happy yeah. like that's the way it is yeah. and i'm like i can't show this vulnerable side to my children they're too young to my mom what am i going to do and i'm like and apurva was so strong he was like a pillar he would just come keep coming to me and saying like you know don't worry why are you worried why are you getting so hyper and i was like so i only had love you know i had so much love um when did you breathe this morning <laughs> i think it was this morning <laughs> this morning when i was sitting and uh, getting ready to come to you and uh, eka 
uh, Rocky Ekala Kani walked in and she said, Come on, something just she walked in with so much love and and I know the love was pouring in and all I was like I said, Yeah. I said, Yeah, how do you feel? I said, I said, I feel I feel happy today. I feel happy today. I like I said I'll 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 breathe today. I, I, I literally Monday the whatever the date is today. I don't even know. I'm so lost. Thirty uh, first yeah. is is the day I have. I, I took a deep breath and I said, I think um, I think it's going to be okay. It is. You've done more than okay. No, but I, I'm like I, I I see. I don't go by statistics or the, it's my own feeling. Yeah. I feel so happy, yar. <laughs> I feel so. I feel so happy with all the pyar. Like you know, I feel like what do I say? Can I just hold your hands? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so lovely. Yeah, I just I I I don't know how to uh, react to this love. Like I'm just so like, wow, ऐसा भी होता है. You know, I was like, mm, um, there's no better way of saying it. God, I'm going to get emotional, but I'm I'm really saying it. It's like uh, it just felt like, <sighs> yeah. How nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it is so lovely. It really is. I have one more question. Yeah. Where do they live after marriage? Mm, Pratyush, Pratyush, my colleague needs to know this. So, um, very, very absolutely valid question to ask. I definitely think that Rani would not move into Randhava Paradise. Hena? And I definitely think that the Chatterjees would be Okay, with the fact that they would move, I think that the setup that that they would move into a separate home because now they yeah. get along with each other's families well enough for them to create a world of their own. So in my head, neither does Rocky move to Rani's, neither does Rocky, Rani move to Rocky's. They have a place of their own. Uh, but in my head, I think Rani would do that place up. Yeah. Yeah. Better I'm aesthetics. I'm not so sure she would depend on Rocky's aesthetics, but my. My also my uh, you think that Rocky would not stop being Rocky. You know we discussed uh, uh, like a part two. You know, really? Head, like we, we used to chat about it. Rani, Alia, uh, Rani, um, Alia, uh, huh. and me. Huh. And they were like, "What's got to be a story?" Because uh, these two deserve a spin off. You know, they do. And, and I'm like, uh, okay, who knows? You know, I we imagined a story. We actually have a kind of a story, but we don't know. We, I mean, this was too nascent a thought. But uh, definitely, I see Rocky and Rani living in somewhere in Delhi, hmm. uh, but away from their parents. Because now they know that even though the back seat driving is being done by the family, they're okay because yeah. they're, they're at least in control of the front seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, what are you doing next? Holiday? I am going to sleep <laughs> for many days. Uh, and when I wake up, there's no sleep, Anu. I have films releasing. I have shows that are on there. I have to do. Coffee with Karan. I have to do lots of things. Yeah, this is the thing. Yeah. Now so you're that, done with one see, role of I yours. Kept, I don't know if anyone noticed. I, so nobody noticed that I was absent for four months. Like I took a sabbatical, like for four months, and then I just think that people don't realize because I'm always everywhere. You're always there. Yeah. So, but, yeah. I, but I was not there anyway. I was trying, and I was wearing black and all full. Like you were not. Seeing. This was your low time. Yes, I was. I was keeping it low. My orange shoes just came out today. <laughs> like I'm like I was keeping it low. When was You see, nobody noticed this. It. You missed that my low key and like my complete low key, like staying away, not doing media, you know, not going with Rocky and Rani to any city visits. No one noticed my absence. I'm very upset that no one noticed my low key uh, strategic <laughs> marketing vibe that just went down the drain just now because I was like somebody must have noticed. Nobody noticed it. Uh, you know, You're I was omnipresent, like, Karan. Yeah, but I I wasn't anywhere. Like yeah. I didn't go anywhere. Now yeah. that I'm seeing it, of course, now you're now the penny's dropping. But it's like, I didn't go anywhere, and they were Correct. like, I said no, no, no. <laughs> I said we will come out if the film gets laughs, and we are really going to be coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> and. Please do consider my idea of the fashion line of Rocky and Rani. Rocky and Rani need a fashion line. I, they, they I mean, Manish be. Malhotra tells me that he has never received so many messages in I his entire anything, life. I want anything, and I don't even know how to wear a sari. No, but like he's like, Karan, what is going on? Yeah. Like, People are talking about the saris in serious reviews. Like in serious reviews, the saris are being mentioned. Rocky's wardrobe is, of course, being talked about for various reasons. Yes. Um, like his designer wear somehow has equaled 
additional humor in the film. Yeah, absolutely. That, like, who else would match? The uh, car and the, the coat. The car and the coat. I it mean, was like, fab. Yeah, yeah. And I have to tell you, that was a happy accident, but we're taking credit for it. <laughs> we realized only on set. And we're like, oh. <laughs> it was like. I so, yeah. It. So, we'll, we'll do a Rocky Rani line. It's a good idea. And in terms of films, Karan, are you thinking of anything else? I'm writing. Hmm. Um, writing with a couple of writers. Um, Ideating between two things. Um, I don't want to take a long gap again. I yeah, really don't. feel. I feel what like is this seven years and all? See, two and a half years to went into Tapt. Yeah. And then two years of the pandemic. Which so will get made. You've yes, said yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Of course. It's a passion project. Um, but I'm writing. I'm developing. I'm thinking. I'm absorbing. I'm ideating. All of that. But I won't take a long gap. This time I need to be back on a set. Because that's where I feel I really belong. Yeah. Well, cannot wait to see it. And... Congratulations again. Thank you, Anu. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This Thank is you. so lovely.